All right, guys, we're back. Sorry about that last video cut. The battery died. It's cut cut my time short on the domino effect part of this uh, program. And I'm going to continue right into this because this is metaphorically speaking, spiritually speaking, and actually speaking, all roads lead back to Rome. If you're a chosen TI, stay out of Rome. Um, in order to understand this, we see the duality of everything. Without one, the other can't be witnessed. Now, I don't want to confuse that by saying without one, the other does not exist. I don't know. But the only way that I have verified in my existence as a TI is seeing that one exists because, because of the other. I've seen it because in my own testimony, in my own witness, um... Your understanding of the third dimension really will come to light when you begin experiencing things that you can't see. Things of the Holy Spirit. Um, the outward effect of being sanctified. And so, you'll come to this road. You'll see the, the multi-tiered reality uh, alongside the duality of certain dimensions and, and existences that are actually, they coincide together. We, we as chosen TIs, we coincide al alongside our spiritual enemies, just as they do us. So, there's so much going on that is hard to see from ground level. But when you're taken back, or even sanctified away into a different understanding, a much bigger picture, if you will... You're going to see this multi-tiered, this, you know, duality of existence, and even maybe more so, many different levels of this. And, and each of us has our own experiences, chosen TIs, to where we're at in, in trying to understand what each of us is going through, what each of us has been gifted to see. And... As you begin to move back, you have to, sometimes you've got to take a step back to see what you're going to do in ter terms of taking two steps forward. And as you get back into the bigger picture, this is where this domino effect leads us. Is These roads and this Hegelian dialectic of a choice that you're given for, for this third dimension... If you're at ground level and and you're a, you're an empty vessel playing this game, you will not realize that just because somebody else in, that's playing the game is is on a different road of the same broad way, these things this broad way is all leading back to Rome. Um, it's all leading into the heart of of the beast system and, and beast worship, and so in terms of moving right into this idea of all roads lead back to Rome, I'm just going to talk about moving beyond the domino effect because you know what I'm talking about. You understand that in order for an individual marker before your witness to exist, you have to relate it and connect the dots to see why such markers are in relation to each other, but they don't really stand alone but they exist individually because the mind collective um, would not have them stand alone. Otherwise, they would not be pieces to this, this game, you know? And so, let's move and talk about who would not, what kind of person, what, what religions would not really pertain to the existential way. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm just way high up on my horse, but... I have to start with the most basic of understandings. That is, the existential way is not for the crowd. It's not for the mind collective. Beyond that, if we're going to talk about certain religions, man-made religions, the existential way would not, it would not fulfill a collective member of the mind uh, it would not make sense to the amount of indoctrination that such individuals have been through up to this point. So, 
most of the people are, are so far along in their indoctrination at this point, they're not going to understand it because they're really, they're only have been conditioned to the single state of mind, half of the coin. So it's not going to be for someone like that's a Catholic. Um, the existential way requires the soul of an individual. And if, you, if you're not operating with a soul at this point, you're not even going to understand this. You're probably not even uh, you're not even going to be here listening. You're probably and if you are, um, you'd probably be like so offended, but rightfully so, you know, because the existential way does exist to to test the hearts of men. You know, so the major religions that lead away from false self are most likely not going to have a. a you know they're not going to be in the heart of understanding of what the existential way is. Now, if you're from if you're of a religion that is is aiming at the self, maybe you're a Buddhist, maybe you're you know some type of Eastern religion where it takes you have to enact some part of yourself. I think you have a chance, you have an opportunity, um, even an, even maybe a New Age. Uh, uh, if you're not too far away from like a sleight of hand and you're able to, and you're really trying to get to know yourself um, beyond that and you come from the New Age movement, I think you have a, you have a good chance of you know, applying some of the tenets of the existential way. And just some of, it's not really like, there are no decrees, no, there really are no decrees, tenets, things that you have to do legalistically that are a part of the existential way because it's such a present, conscious, oriented awareness to the relationship of, of the person of Jesus Christ in your life. So you're going to have a chance if, you're, if you've been outcasted. If, if you're in prison, this is, the perfect, this is the perfect place for you in starting your understanding because you're in a place of physical isolation. So there's a lot of not only physical testing that's involved, but a place of spiritual testing and a place of beginning that examination that is crucial to us to a, not only an existential crisis but a spiritual crisis in your life you're forced you're being forced to face yourself and the doubts thereof so in some respects you you have a chance you know and now obviously if you're a jesuit or you're a freemason um i hope this isn't I hope the existential way is in complete offense to what you stand for and your secret little doctrines and your secrecy and the, and everything that you stand for in terms of doing Satan's business. Um, these two groups, the Judeo-Freemasons and basically the, the Crypto-Judeo-Jesuit uh, um, order, they have no place in the kingdom. If you, ask, if you had to ask me... Um, there's no place in the king. This is not. This is an orientation of man-made control and, and outright blasphemy against the Holy Spirit and everything that God has sent His Son here, you know, for in terms of His chosen. So, um, this is not for them. This is not for their control efforts. Um, there will be no counter reformation to the existential way. We the, the, and this is the important thing of you know. When I came into this world, I really wanted to make a change. And sometimes going the lone route will prevent certain measures of the world from infiltrating. Because these are the two groups that love to infiltrate. They look, they're all over your churches. These wolves are everywhere. These wolves are the ones gang-stalking you. Um, they work alongside the Druid Witch Pagan. Um, descendants of Western Europe and Northern Europe. Um, you can you can include Ireland as a main there because the, because see these groups are used for the purposes of the Catholic Church. They're used. They're not Christians at all. They're used. Their their bloodlines are actually very pagan. So you have the Canaanite and the Druid witch pagan, which even in in past times in Europe. They were the ones who persecuted the Anglican Church and conducted the Counter Reformation against the Lutherans um, and Luther of his time, and they're the same ones that came here. They're here, 
They dominate this culture. They've infiltrated. And that's what's great about having a personal outreach as compared to a church. Because a church is, is, sub, is subject to being infiltrated and controlled by a Kenite pastor. And, and there will be no info. There, there never will be. In, as long as I'm, uh, even if I'm gone, my website's still going to be here. In spirit and truth, go to the existential way. There's nothing you can infiltrate. Because you have to apply the cross to yourself and, and, and to your own life, personally speaking. And these are something that the Freemasons and Jesuits could never do. They're bound to Satan. They're held captive. And they're not chosen anyways. They were never chosen. This, these bloodlines were not chosen of Christ. They're of the fallen Lucifer himself. So um, they're not full in Christ chosen, obviously. And I'm adamant against these two groups. They're vile. They're the, they're the brood of vipers. They're serpents. So... Um, Let's cast them out, let, you know, let's deport them from the sovereignty of our country. They're the ones instigating, and, and, and they're agitators. They co-agitate your, your gang stalking um, purposefully, you know. They're doing their duty to the Vatican, if you will. So stay away from these groups, you know. You don't need to be a part. They're not going to grow you. They're gonna, they want to scalp your soul and control you. And so moving on. I'm not, I don't want, I'm not really emotional about it. I just don't care. I don't fear men. I don't fear the world. So... Um, let's, let's move it beyond. Okay, so, I come from, you know, Calvary Chapel, this evangelical movement. I grew up, you know, from about 17 to about 19, 17 to 20, going to Pastor Chuck at, at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, and, um, I prefer to withhold my tongue about who the person of Pastor Chuck most likely really is, because um, it's a heavily Protestant movement, and it's it's quite fascist. It's quite a fascist church. They teach pre-tribulation to keep their congregants seated, um, and that's fine, but just not for me, and not for chosen TIs. You're not going to see... And do you have a chance as an evangelical? There are so many split sects of evangelical. I believe that the greatest thing an evangelical can do for him or herself, you know, as a Christian, is to begin taking the word seriously by going within, going inside of oneself with a passion. And this is really the sect that I come from. It's a Protestant, it's Protestant evangelical. Um... I, under, I, I was never really accepted. They always looked at me different anyways. They never really accepted me. Um, it's, it's, an, it's an outgrowth of the crowd. That's what really it is at this point, you know. And I, I've been there. I was there about a few months, nah, maybe about four or five months back at their bookstore. And yeah, they're going to send, they've sent security and a bunch of, you know, they, they're, they're gang stalkers, you know, totally. They're gang, they'll gang stalk you in Calvary, especially at the big one. But, you know, do evangelicals, do, yeah, the existential way is perfect for helping an individual who wants to grow further along in his walk. And that's really, um, I, can, I went from there and then I, you know, I passed through uh, the Messianic congregation a couple times, but... I wasn't. See, a lot of the a lot, the problem with the crowd is, you you don't get to grow beyond a certain point. You really don't. You really you have to abide by things that are. If you're not feeling the calling of God on it, in your life, these are the type of groups that will keep you heavily under control, and they'll they'll let you know about it. You know, and and. To be honest, every time I've adjoined myself to these ministries, whether they're on campus. See, I was an on campus president for a year. And a tre you know, an on campus ministry, and did this, you know, you know, with mission trips, and then I was, you know, part of a messianic congregation, and a couple of them, and a couple of different evangelical. And the thing is, is to me, it was forced fellowship. I, I wasn't really friends with anybody there until I be, you know, I came into my own later on, and I, I moved in, and I understood why I was so different from the crowd. I never belonged, and and really. It's hard because I got family that conducts their daily, um, you know, their daily life association to these evangelical patterns of control and existence, and it's 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 tough for me, you know, it really is. So beyond that, 
I've never felt welcomed. I've always, I've always stood out, and, and I needed to grow. And then that's when I began studying the church from outside in by going and look and just looking up Kierkegaard's experience as a, a philosopher. And some of you might even say Christian philosopher. But beyond that, I'm not really much into existentialism anymore as I used to be. You know, because I really don't believe in this in this sense of humanism without God. It doesn't make sense to me. I feel like the spirit is like the 90% of the iceberg in who we are, and only 10% of, of who we actually are in the flesh is, is it, it's really 100% of what the world wants, is, is that 10% of your flesh, and that's it. So, that's why I created the existential way. So if you're if you're really like an individual, this is going to be for you. If you're trying to gain a, a better perspective and be grounded in who you are, this is for you. You know, if if you're in a, you know, and, and really like the big the big evangelicals, they're not going to understand this. They're, those are they're far gone. They're far left behind at this point. They were never chosen. Never will be. Um, these are rapture ready people, and most likely they're not even going to be the real ones. You know. To take part in what it, in the true uh, outgrowth of what it really means, you know, it really is a spiritual thing right now among the, you know, the trials of of the saints, you know, and, and going through this process of uh, of the trial by fire, you know. So, like, and and so, if if you're part of a small, you know, congregation and you're trying to find yourself, you know, as a college student and you want to get a head start and you want to cut through all that middlemen stuff, the existential way is going to be for you because I've always been searching and always knocking and, and it was just, um, I needed something for people who were going through what I was going through to learn, a very difficult, hard-fought struggle. Not with God so much, but with people trying to define God to me. You know, that's that's the hard part is... is and then you're entering the crowd daily to have to try to control, control, and they always want to control for the established order. And that's that's the false nature of man, you know, and the false worship of the beast system. And that's why I say, you know, all roads lead back to Rome, you know. And just because you're on a different road of the established order doesn't change the fact, you know. So understand that if you're an individual and if you're